Cloudcast Media presents from the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is the Cloudcast with Aaron Delb and Brian Gracely, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome back to the Cloudcast. We are coming to you live from the massive Cloudcast studios here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hope everybody is doing well. March is upon us. We are into the third month of the year. I'm very excited because uh, March sort of signals a couple of interesting things, uh, at least at least in my life. And I know for, for many people, although maybe this might be U.S.-centric or Northern Hemisphere-centric, it, uh, it says that spring is right around the corner. Spring is uh, just, uh, you know, 20-ish, three, three weeks or so away, uh, you know, sort of 20 to 21st of the month, whenever you celebrate spring. Uh, so it means the weather starts to, to get better, starts to improve. It also means that uh, we are into March Madness, which is one of the, uh, the sort of great uh, two, three, four-week runs of sports, at least here in the States. If you uh, follow college basketball at all, it is uh, kind of one of the, the really fun times of the year. You get to, you know, a lot of emotion, a lot of interesting uh, sports, a lot of, you know, people become heroes and people fail and all sorts of wonderful things like that. Um, but it's also, you know, kind of an interesting time for me. It's it's one of those things, and I'm trying to think if there are other aspects in life or things that uh, there are things that you truly love and things that you truly hate at the same time. And in my case, if you listen to the show for a long time, uh, this is the time when, when spring comes along. So it means the weather gets better. You get to be outside. You get to start wearing shorts. The sun is out for longer. The daylights are longer. And it also means pollen at the same time. So from that perspective, all the time that I get to spend outside also becomes sort of my worst enemy. So it's uh, it's an interesting dichotomy. Uh, it's an interesting time of year. Anyways, getting to the the real meat of why we're doing this, why we're doing the this Sunday perspective. This is our 800th show, um, and it's sort of weird. Usually, uh, in the past, our our you know hundredth, four hundredth, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred show, uh, for some reason, have fallen on Wednesdays. So we would do them with a guest. We would try and make them about some big topic. Uh, this week, it just so happens to fall on a Sunday. So we're going to do it as a Sunday perspective show. And I thought uh, I would do a show about maybe the the most frequently asked question we get from people that, um, you know, that come on the show as guests, you know, behind the scenes or people that we talk to just, you know, friends and family and, and people who are like, are you still doing the podcast? Is that something you guys still do? Or, you know, why are you doing this? What got you started with it? So I thought what I would do is not so much give a history of the podcast, how we, how we got to doing the show, but use it as a mechanism to talk about something that I know a lot of people are experimenting with, have done, maybe would like to do. And that's uh, what the kids like to call a side hustle, right? So the idea that you, you know, you have a hobby that maybe you want to turn into something that generates money for you. Maybe you are somebody who enjoys your job, but wishes that you made more money. And you know that uh, the path to making more money in your job through things like promotions or starting it yourself might be you know, not exactly uh, an immediate thing for you. So you're looking to do something on the side. Um, maybe you have a hobby that you're really good at that you now think, oh, well, people are always asking me all the time. Why won't you do that for me? Um, so I thought what I would do is talk a little bit about, um, you know, how Aaron and I got into this side hustle that is uh, known as the podcast or known as the Cloudcast, um, and just sort of talk through some of the behind the scenes things that people may or may not think about, um, you know, how we how we started doing it, how much time it takes, um, the commitment it takes from not only ourselves, but friends and family and all that sort of stuff. And so I'm going to dig into that right after the break. Are you getting pressure from finance to justify or reduce your cloud bill? Cloud Zero is the only cloud cost platform loved by engineers and trusted by finance. Cloud Zero can identify unused, idle, or over-provisioned resources, alert you to spend anomalies, and organize 100% of your spend into a framework that mirrors your business structure, like cost per customer, product feature, or team. It's the most powerful platform ever built to provide accurate, granular visibility into your total cloud spend without the typical pitfalls of legacy cloud cost management tools like endless tagging or clunky Kubernetes support. Manage cost, optimize development, and maximize profit all in one platform. Join companies like Rapid7, Drift, and SeatGeek by visiting cloudzero.com slash cloudcast to get started. That's cloudzero.com slash cloudcast. Visit today to experience immediate and ongoing savings on your cloud bill. And we're back. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, we're going to kind of walk through at least, you know, our our perspective, our experience of kind of doing something that nowadays people like to call a side hustle, sort of a, um, you know, I've always thought of it as, you know, somewhere between a hobby, uh, a second job, um, you know, a thing that you're exploring. And 
I don't really want to talk about this, you know, purely from the perspective of you just want to make money. How do you go about making money? Um, we'd be happy to talk about that at some point in time. When Aaron and I first started doing this, I guess let me give a little bit of history of the podcast. Uh, not that anybody necessarily loves history lessons. I know I've done history lessons on the Sunday perspective before, but just to kind of give some perspective on on how we got into this, because to a certain extent, the podcast for us has been uh in some instances, a hobby, I guess it's something that, that we enjoy doing. Um, it's something that we've done uh, to a certain extent out of out of necessity, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, we've done it, you know, as it's grown and evolved and all that sort of stuff. It has, you know, become somewhat of a, of a profitable thing or a side hustle, if you will, sort of make a little bit of money. But uh, yeah, let me let me kind of dive into just some of the, the thought process, and then I'll kind of walk through some of the things that we've learned over time that I think could relate to anybody trying to, you know, transition from, I have something I'm interested in, maybe it's a hobby, maybe you're thinking about it just as a small business or a side business, any of those, anywhere on that spectrum, we can kind of talk about some stuff to consider. So in terms of historically, it, I think we've told this on the show, but it may have been many, many, many years ago. Um, Aaron and I basically started the show, I don't even know if I want to call it on a whim, but we, you know, we... We, you know, historically, famously live in North Carolina. Um, you know, pre-pandemic, for anybody who is old enough to remember, there used to be a thing we used to go to called offices. And in the tech industry, there used to be a very distinct. You had to, if you wanted to work at certain companies in the tech industry, you know, on the vendor side of things, or if you wanted to do certain kinds of work, um, you know, you tended to have to live where the headquarters was of that location, or maybe a regional office, but it really depended on the type of work you wanted to do. If you wanted to build something, if you wanted to be a product manager, if you wanted to be a core engineer, if you wanted to have a leadership role, all that sort of stuff, you typically had to live in the headquarters, which meant for the most part, uh, Silicon Valley, San Francisco, or the Silicon Valley, the Palo Alto sort of area of the world. Um, Maybe you needed to live in Seattle. Maybe you needed to live in Boston. Maybe you needed to live in Austin. But those were kind of the three or four hubs where you needed to live. And the downside and why a lot of people didn't necessarily move there, although there are lots of people in those areas, was typically the cost of living. It was, you know, while you could be part of something fairly big and you could, you know, aspire to do interesting work and there was, you know, opportunities if you were getting it at the right time or doing certain kinds of things um, to potentially make a lot of money if you were, you know, getting things like stock options and so forth. But the cost of living was was significantly higher, um, you know, significantly higher, like New York City, significantly higher, maybe more than New York City, significantly higher. If you were living in parts of San Francisco or Palo Alto, um, you know, the the kind of quality of life may not have been what you wanted. Um, you know, you may have been, you know, if you were a city person, uh, you liked living in the city, you didn't necessarily want to drive, all that kind of stuff. Um, those types of things were you know, maybe very, very appealing to you. But for others, if you maybe had a family or if you just, you know, weren't, you know, you weren't a city person, right? You didn't necessarily want to live in a city or you didn't want to live in a cramped apartment or you wanted to be able to drive or, you know, whatever. You didn't want to live in the, the weather of Seattle, whatever that thing might be. You know, you were like, hey, I, I don't, you know, what, what, what options do I have uh, to not live there, but also be in the tech industry, right? So long reason, long ramble for this. Aaron and I basically decided maybe one of the things that we could do is kind of be adjacent to that, right? Like for us, it was how do we learn these things that are going on in the case of cloud computing from people that are living in it, breathing it, doing it, uh, but not necessarily have to move. And so for us, the the thing that jumped out at us was if we could talk to these people and find some medium to talk to these people, uh, that would give us the ability to at least have the knowledge necessary or at least some adjacent knowledge to be relevant to certain kind of jobs that we might have been interested in. And, and for the most part, when we were first starting the podcast and still to a certain extent to this day, it was, you know, technology centric roles, right? They might've been product management roles or technical marketing roles or, you know, systems engineering roles or whatever they might've been. They were, they were fairly technical and hence, if you listen to a lot of the, especially the early, early shows, um, you know, we, we really kind of dug into a lot of the technology. How does it work? And, you know, what, what skills do you need to do this and all that kind of stuff. So for us, it was, the hope was we would like to continue to be gamefully employed in this industry And we would also like to do that while not having to be completely forced, unless we choose to, to live in one of the three or four really, you know, high cost of living, maybe not most desirable cost of living, at least for the two of us, 
And so we used the podcast for many, many, many years as a vehicle to do that. And what it turned into was a mechanism for us to kind of be aware of a lot of technologies. It didn't necessarily make us really smart at us. It did teach us how to learn very quickly. It did teach us how to interact with a lot of different people and learn a lot of things very fast. And that that skill set in and of itself in our industry is valuable. The ability to, to speak, the ability to learn things quickly, the ability to connect the dots between, you know, if you've listened to the show for a long time, a lot of times episodes will be, you know, it would be in topic A and topic B and topic C and topic D and so forth. And being able to be like, oh, okay, that's relevant to this. That's relevant to this type of person or this user base or this you know, use case or this economics or whatever. So it, it, it helped us grow quite a bit in ways that we didn't necessarily expect it. Right. So the first thing I would sort of say about this whole sort of side hustle thing is, is have a reason for wanting to do it that is important to you in some way. Right. And it, that importance could mean a lot of different things. In our case, it was, we looked at it as part of a survival technique for wanting to stay in this tech industry, but also kind of bending the rules in order for us to have a certain lifestyle or a lifestyle for our families that made sense for us. Right. So, so it was, it was more on the order of, it was an adjacency to the work that we did. And we did it because we, you know, we wanted to get certain things out of it that we didn't think we could necessarily get from if we drew a straight line from our job or the way the rules of the industry were at the time, right? So that's one type of side hustle. Now, the other things that are relevant, I think, would be relevant for a lot of people is is a couple of things. Number one, we we recognized that we were going to be taking uh, time away from from our lives, right? And so, you know, one of the first things you have to ask yourself is you know, why are you doing this, right? What's the goal? And then, you know, or is there a goal? Because there are many people who will start doing things as a hobby, as a, you know, I'm just kind of want to explore this thing. Um, I want to, you know, I'm, I'm interested in this stuff. And you don't necessarily have to have a goal. You may just simply do it because it's something you enjoy doing and you have free time or you're willing to allocate your free time to doing it. I think the second thing that you have to ask yourself is, you know, for the people around you that you either have a relationship with or responsibility for. So in the case of Aaron and I, uh, you know, family, wife and kids, um, you know, you may have responsibilities to other people, whether it's, you know, parents or friends and family or something else. And so, you know, from a timing perspective, one of the first things you really have to think about with these things is how much of taking up my time will that impact these other people? And, and are they aware of what the impact of that time would be? They may not you may want to ask them for permission. You may not ask them for permission because you say, well, that's my time. I can do what I want with it. But I think it's important to have an understanding of with the people that are, you know, relying on you in some way or are adjacent to your time to let them know, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this, this extra thing, right? I have my regular day job, which is takes up X amount of my time, but I'm going to start doing this extra thing. And, uh, you know, it's also going to take up Y amount of my time. And I want you to understand the, you know, the reason for doing that or the fact that I'm going to do that. Right. So I think that's the first thing to kind of understand in Aaron and I's case, uh, you know, telling our, our wives and, and, you know, Hey, we're going to try and do this such that, you know, we can, we can live a more, you know, the lifestyle that we want to live. Right. And they were pretty understanding of that. Um, you know, again, we had to figure out in the early days how long it was going to take to do a podcast or how long much time it was going to take or what day, of the week we were going to do it and would we still be able to take our kids to their, you know, their sporting activities, or their school activities. And, you know, so you, you got to work that out. I think the second thing you, you kind of want to work out with your sort of side hustle or second thing is, you know, how much, how much cost goes into this? And again, this is where you get into kind of the intersection of why am I doing this? And, uh, you know, what are my goals of doing this? Right. So for example, if, if your side hustle is, oh, well, I, I, you know, I really, I'm into model trains or I'm into something that I'm doing as a hobby and as a collectible, well, you know, there's probably going to be some cost associated with that. Now, you know, for those of you that have any sort of hobby, you know, that hobbies can range from being, you know, very, very minutia little things to being very expensive, very time consuming, very space consuming in some cases, you know, you start collecting things and those things need certain space and so forth. Um, so I think you need to ask yourself, like, how much are you willing to put into this? And again, you know, balancing that with the people that have some relationship with you of like, okay, what impact does that have? Right. If I 
go into this hobby and it costs me several thousand dollars, do they realize that, well, we might not go on a vacation this year or we might not be able to make that repair to the house or, you know, we might not be able to, uh, you know, upgrade some aspect of your life that somebody else had really been hoping for, right? Oh, maybe you're not going to you know, get kids presents for this holiday or whatever it might be, right? So again, you, what you're going to constantly find, unless you're doing this entirely by yourself as, as a single person, you know, you, you're going to start working into the things that, that impact your day-to-day life. How much do things cost? How much time do they take? How much space do they take? How much priority will this be with the people around you? And these were things that, that Aaron and I had to all sort of work through. And, you know, we went through multiple struggles because there was two of us. And so we had to schedule ourselves. We had to schedule a third person or a fourth person to be the guest on the show. What time were we going to do that? Could, you know, when our kids were really little, you know, were they going to be quiet enough for us to be able to record the podcast that our spouse know that, hey, can you not, um, you know, do that thing that makes a lot of noise? Maybe it's making dinner. Maybe it's, you know, having people over. Maybe it's one of the kids has band practice and they want to practice their instrument around, right? Like you have to work through kind of a lot of things. Um, so, you know, that's the, that's sort of the first stage. Why am I doing this? What are my goals? Do I need goals? How much is this going to cost? Is that impactful to you or what you're trying to do is, do you think of it as an investment? Do you think of it as just a cost? Um, and then, you know, things like time and space considerations and the people around you consideration. So you kind of want to work through those and those you'll work through initially. And then depending on if you continue to do your side hustle, your hobby, your, you know, second job, whatever it might be, those things might change over time. And that's where you, you know, you, you want to be able to have ongoing communications with people about, Hey, you know, we did this and that was sort of phase one. And now we're doing the second thing. And now it's phase two. Um, the second thing I think that you really kind of want to get into is once you start doing this, um, you know, what tends to happen, especially if you're doing it from a quote unquote side hustle perspective is when do I start seeing results? Right. And those results could be, uh, you know, like for Aaron and I, our thing was always, well, a, we, we prefer not to ever get fired because we don't live in Silicon Valley. We want to be capable enough to do our jobs remotely, right? So, you know, we were always trying to prove to ourselves, like, am I capable enough to get that next interesting job? Do I have enough skill set to be able to do that job? Or could I be better? Could I use the skills that I learned from the podcast to be better at my current job? All those sort of things. So for us, it was, you know, sort of a, you know, binary you know, am I employed? Am I not employed? Maybe could I get promoted or could I get another, you know, could I get a better job? So it was kind of job oriented. We never really went into the podcast thinking about like, could we make more money as a secondary thing? You know, if, if we had happened to have gotten a better job and that made more money, the primary job, well, that would have been a nice benefit of it. Uh, But the goal was never like, you know, become independently wealthy doing the podcast through ads or something like that. Uh, but many people do go into these, these sort of hobbies or, or second, um, you know, second things going like, I want to, to make a bunch of money on it. And I think this is where, like we've talked about a million times on the show, this is where you kind of have to think of yourself then as a, as a business, right? And you have to do the things that any business would do. So, you, you know, you have to think about like, okay, how much am I willing to invest in this before I start seeing money come back, right? So if you're charging people of some sort, whatever you're doing, you're doing consulting work. If you're making things for people or, you know, do you do it for free for a while to get your name out there? Um, you know, so you, you want to have a certain amount of business acumen or you want to engage with somebody because it's very easy to start doing this. And all of a sudden you realize like I'm taking up a decent amount of my time. Maybe it's 10 hours a week, 15 hours a week. Um, I'm putting money into it. I'm spending money. Maybe you're in three, four, five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, depending on what you're working on, right? Like at some point you you if your goal is like this is not a hobby, this is not just simply for learning or for enjoyment, like this is to have some sort of financial outcome, you want to think about like, well, when do I start acting in the way that becomes money positive, cash flow positive, whatever it might be. And and this is, you know, this is where you sort of take some learnings from you know, as, as we talked about on the show a million times, you know, how businesses go about doing that, right? So are you starting off by doing this? Uh, you know, how are you getting word out there to people? Are you doing it word of mouth? Are you using social media? Are you, you know, doing it via friends and family? Um, at some point, do you have to do the thing that many companies do, which is like, oh, we have a, we have a free tier, 
right? Like I'm giving away things for free. I'm willing to, uh, you know, put up my time and my resources in order for people to learn about this, but I'll do it for free. I'm not going to charge you, but I really would like you to, um, you know, be willing to give me a good review, a five-star review, whatever that thing might be. Or, you know, do you sort of start it from day one saying, look, this is, th- this is going to be a business. I'm going to put things in place for this to be a business model, right? And, you know, this is, this, this is where the learnings from, you know, freemium and free tiers and open source and, you know, like, when do I start doing marketing? When do I start spending on advertising and marketing? You want to think about all those things. Um, but again, this is also where, you know, you want to be in sync with the people around you, whether you're doing this yourself or whether you're doing this uh, with somebody else to realize like, well, if we start doing this in order to make money or if we're able to make money, you know, are we aligned? So let's say, for example, we use Aaron and I as an example, you know, are we aligned about how much time it's going to take to do the activities that, you know, could generate money, right? So, you know, uh, I'll just give you an example. So in the case of Aaron and I, when we first started doing this, um, and I'll get into this in conflicts of interest. Uh, we were very adamant that like, we weren't going to do advertisements because our concern was, well, we're going to get advertisements from a certain set of people and, you know, from other companies or vendors or something. And that was going to cause us a problem either in not being able to get new guests. So conflict of interest, or we would go into the office one day and somebody would say, Hey, you know, you work at company X. We all work here at company X. I heard you having a an advertisement for company Y, well, that's a direct competitor to us. Why are you doing that? Why are you using your platform in order to promote company Y when we pay you 365 days a year to promote company X, right? So we were always very, very concerned about those sort of conflicts of interest. You know, other conflicts of interest can arise depending on what the work you're doing, whether you're contractually bound by your your, your primary job to be able, able to do external things and all kinds of stuff like that. So we were always very concerned about that. Um, we did start having some people, you know, reach out to us as advertisers and we, we were very adamant about like, okay, let's make sure that if we start doing this, we do it in a, in a way that's continues to make the, the outcome of what we're doing, the product, not too disruptive to people. Let's try and pick, you know, sponsors that, that we believe in or that we think, you know, provide a good capability for the audience and the audience can decide all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we never went into it necessarily with, you know, money is our, is our first goal. Um, over time though, as, as opportunities came along, we did have to have that conversation. Aaron and I had to have that conversation. Are you willing to put in a couple of extra hours a week to get this? Are you willing to, to do this in order for us to open up another opportunity to, to potentially monetize this thing? And, you know, there was, you, you'd think that would be a very easy thing. Like, oh, somebody wants to give you money. You should be willing to do it. You know, and there was times when, you know, Aaron and I were like, hey, that makes a lot of sense. Let's go do it. It will be very easy. It fits into our schedule. There were other times when, you know, depending on what was going on with life, uh, whether it was we were traveling a bunch, and we just didn't have any extra hours, or maybe there was something going on with family where it was like, man, you know, even my work isn't even my biggest priority right now. You know, those things were interfering. There was times when we had, uh, we had obligations to sponsors, for example, and you know, one of us, something happened, you know, somebody got sick, some family member got sick, some activity was going on in life where you were just like, I know we're supposed to do the podcast twice a week or whatever it was, but like, man, I just, I can't focus on that right now. I really, I actually need to be away from it for maybe multiple months, months at a time. And so you may have noticed over time, like sometimes Aaron is, you know, doing more of the shows than I am, or I'm doing more of the shows than Aaron is, or whatever it might be. We've had to work out, like, how do we, how do we negotiate this thing together in terms of, you know, you, this is not our primary thing. This is first and foremost, a side hobby. Uh, but we have certain obligations, like how do we go about balancing those things? And this, those are all the kind of things that you want to take into consideration. If you start being reasonably successful with what you're doing and you get out of, you know, well, this is just for us. And you get into, well, that we're doing this for us, but we also have obligations to other people. And, uh, you know, life is still going on and other things are still going on. So, you know, I think you, this is where, you know, upfront as you're starting your thing, if you've got other people involved with it, you want to make sure those communication channels are fairly open. Um, because again, how well you do in this side hustle could change over time. It might become wildly successful. It might become moderately successful. Um, but you know, you'll, you'll realize that as you're doing it more and more, your interest in it will 
peak and wane. Um, your ability to do it all the time will peak and wane. Um, your time availability will change over time, right? Maybe you have kids, maybe you're traveling. So maybe you get sick, maybe a family member gets sick, maybe some other opportunity becomes more important and you're like, oh, well, do I keep doing that? When do I stop doing it? So, you know, all those things come into play. And again, they're they're just like any business, right? You're going to have opportunities. You're going to have priorities. You're going to have limited resources to do everything. Um, and so the more you can kind of have a plan and have some flexibility to your plan, the better off that you're going to find that you can continue to do the thing you want to do. So I think those are the, the biggest things. And I think the other thing, especially if you're doing something, whether it's for yourself or whether you're doing it with multiple people, you know, you're, you're thinking about success. But then you also want to have some sort of plan of like, well, what do we do if we fail? Because to fail by yourself is one thing, right? You can kind of look yourself in the eye and say, you know, I did the best I could, or I didn't know what I was doing, or, you know, the circumstances around it just, you know, created certain outcome. But when you're doing it with multiple people, you know, that's when, you know, just like running a business, you know, you want to be content, you want to be conscious of, well, what happens if this doesn't go to plan? What happens if we fail? What happens if you know, we fail for multiple months at a time, or we're spending more money than we expected to spend. Like, what are the impacts of that? And and what do you want to try and do to, to deal with it? Right? So I, I think what you what, you, what, what ultimately you find if I were to sort of TLDR this whole thing, and I'll kind of wrap it up, right? Figure out why you're in it, why you're doing this, because ultimately, you know, you're, you're going to be taking up time that might be really valuable for you to be expanding and learning. And we've always encouraged that in the show. And that might be a great reason for you to do this. You might be taking up time uh, to get away from something you don't like. I've seen lots of people do sort of side hustles because they're like, well, I don't really like my job. All right. So, so figure out why are you doing this? What are your goals? How much time are you willing to take? How much are you willing to spend to achieve those goals or to just be doing this? Make sure you communicate well with the people around you um, because you're going to have more stakeholders and shareholders and people adjacent to you than you think you do. Um, and so you want to be, you know, as, as open about your communications as possible, as open about your priorities, what impact it will have on them. Because the more people you can have in your corner, uh, they'll help out. They'll be understanding. They'll be flexible about time. They'll understand that you've got to do certain things. And then I think ultimately, you know, you, you want to think about, okay, well, what if this thing achieves the goals that we have? What if it exceeds the goals that we have? What if it fails to meet the goals and sort of think through, well, what happens then? Right. And you don't have to have perfect plans for everything, but again, you know, th this, these, these side hustles all are time, money, relationship, goal dependent. And so you want to think through like, Hey, if we keep growing, you know, do I, am I still doing it with the same, with the right people? You know, do we still enjoy doing this five years in? Do we still enjoy doing it 10 years in? Does your partner or your spouse, uh, do they still get out of it what they hope to get out of it or has that all changed? Right. So it's an ongoing thing. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are interested in doing it. Uh, I, I highly encourage it. Aaron and I, I think if we looked back and we said, Hey, has, has the Cloudcast been a, you know, a useful thing? Well, you know, we're still doing it 800 shows later. Um, I think we've gained a lot out of it far, far, far more than any sort of monetary thing that we've, we've been able to to do over the last couple of years, um, the people we've met, the ability for us to, you know, stay relevant and meet our goals in terms of the industry of not having to move all those sort of things. I, I think we would say, you know, it's, it's turned out really well. Um, uh, but I know plenty of people who, you know, have done it for six weeks and given up and people have done it for six months and given up or, you know, done it for a few years and, and, and given up. And so, you know, no judgment. Um, it look every, every job, every, every business you start is hard to do every extra job you do is hard to do. If you happen to get lucky and you happen to, to make it work, um, it's awesome. And if you don't, you know, hopefully you take something from it. Uh, you know, that, you know, why did you start doing it? What did you learn from the amount of time you spent on it? Um, and you, you know, it might be something that, Hey, it didn't work out at the time when you first got started. Maybe you had a kid at the time, or maybe you had a new job unexpectedly or something changed in your life. Um, the nice thing about side hustles is you can always come back to them, right? And and more and more, depending on what you're doing, 
um, the world is making it easier and easier to get started with these things. So uh, I'll leave it with that. Um, someday we'll do a follow up on, on some of the things that, that we probably wish we did better on the podcast and, and uh, you know, wish we had done, you know, if we had started the show over again now, like what we would have done different, maybe we'll do that again, you know, in a few months or something like that. But uh, anyways, hope this has been in, in useful. Um, I encourage everyone, if, the, if you have an opportunity do some sort of side hustle. Um, it's it, it, it teaches you a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about what motivates you and, and how well you work with others and, and sort of you get to be your own boss a little bit if you're not your own boss today. Um, but anyways, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, 800th show, not a special guest, but hopefully a topic that's uh, that's useful to, to a lot of you. But uh, thank you all for listening, whether you've listened for one show or 100 shows or even 800 shows, if there's any of you out there. Uh, thank you all for helping us get to this milestone. Um, it, it seems like we've been doing this for a long time. It is still a ton of fun. We get to meet more importantly than anything. We get to meet a really a bunch of nice, nice people and interesting people and people that are are doing stuff that you know has impact on our industry. Um, and so we're, we're fortunate for that. So with that, I'll wrap it up. Thank you all for listening. Thanks for telling a friend. Thanks for, uh, for giving us feedback on the show. If you get a chance, give us a five star in, in whatever podcast app that you have or do it on your mom's phone or your friend's phone or, or any of those things. So with that, I'll wrap it up. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to The Cloudcast. Please visit thecloudcast.net to find more shows, show notes, videos, and everything social media.